What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are bringing you, yes, another episode of Accepting All Trades. We are reviving the series. But you know what, it's the summer, NHL 19 slowly reaching the end of its life cycle. So I figured why not bring back this series and see if you guys still, still enjoy it. As you can see from the jerseys behind me and the hat on my head and the title of the video and the thumbnail and the team on your screen, we are using the Vancouver Canucks. Now, like we did last summer when we were in this series, I'm gonna be posting polls in the community tab for you guys to go and vote on which team you wanna see me use in next episode. And as of today, EA just dropped a new roster update, so let's test it out with the Vancouver Canucks. So their best players are Pedersen, Brock Besser, and Jacob Markstrom. They don't have the greatest team, but you know what? With a few trades and a bit of luck, we could end up making the playoffs. So we are tied for the second worst team in terms of overall in our division. The only team that's worse is Edmonton, who's a, a two-man show apparently. So it's not, a, you know, a huge, we're not a huge disadvantage. And like I said, uh, we could make the playoffs. You never know in one year. So to refresh you guys on how the series work, I pick one team to use each episode and I run through one year of a franchise mode simulation. The goal is of course to win the Stanley Cup but the caveat is that any trade offers that I receive from the CPU, I have to accept. Now these are the settings that we roll with in the simulation here, owner mode's off, salary cap is off just so we can you know, get the most interesting trades possible. We don't limit ourselves. Uh, CPU trades are obviously on morale. I don't like uh, that playing into the results. I just like it being, you know, up to the players and how they are right now and their potential. In terms of the actual game settings, we like to turn injuries off, keep period length at 20 minutes just so that it, I find that provides more realistic stats. CPU trades are on of course, difficulty superstar, doesn't really matter but I just like the idea of it and trade difficulty is going to be hard. So we got this entire season ahead of us but before we get into it, as always, let me know how you guys think the Vancouver Canucks are going to do this year in the poll above. Are we going to miss the playoffs? Like in real life, are we gonna make the playoffs or are we gonna go all the way and win the Stanley Cup? As always, let me know in the poll above. All right, so before we get into anything, we gotta fix our trade block here. This is how I've set it up. Now Vancouver was an interesting team because they have a few superstars, like not really superstars. They have like players that have really high trade value but aren't necessarily superstars, more like elite prospects. So Bull Horvat was more of a medium tier prospect. You had like Pedersen, Hughes, and Besser, whose trade value was all really, really high. And I don't think we would have gotten a trade with them. So I picked Horvat for the forwards. There's no real defenseman other than Quinn Hughes that had crazy trade value. So I went with Thatcher Demko instead because he's 80 overall right now. He'll be our backup, but he's got good potential and good trade value. So I think we can get something for him while still riding Jacob Markstrom. And then our first round pick in 2019 will be the three marquee items that we put on our trade block. And in terms of our surplus and want surplus, anything and everything is on the table. But what we want to get back from the CPU uh, is kind of specific. Anybody less than 35 years of age and at least 78 overall in any position, no draft picks. We want players because we're not going through the draft. We don't care about that. We're just, just a one year sim, okay? We want to win the cup this year. So hopefully this is the trade block that'll set us up to do that. Now let's look at the team before we get into the actual sim here. Pedersen and Besser, okay, so a solid first line. Uh, again, no 90 overalls, which might be a little bit tough. Might be tough to score some goals with this team, but uh, they've got the depth at least, I think, I think. But it looks like Pedersen and Besser and Horvat probably will carry this team for the most part in terms of points. You got Tanner Pearson, Nikolai Goldobin on the second line, Louis Erickson, Jay Beagle, and Jake Bertin on the third line, which is actually a very solid third line. Think about it. And then Josh Levo, Brandon Sutter, and Anton Roussel. So in terms of names, this is actually not a bad team at all. They got good depth, a solid third line, I'd say solid fourth line. Uh, the top two lines could be a bit better, but you got a, a year to develop at least. On D, this is where we kind of struggle again. Edler, Tanev, Stetcher, Hutton, Hughes, and Luke Shen. So again, no stud here, but uh, they're all capable. You got Quinn Hughes, so hopefully he can do something um, on that third pairing. Maybe we can move him up over the course of the year. And in that, like I said, we have Jacob Markstrom starting with Demko backing him up. But I think in this type of simulation, we want to move a piece that has high trade value 
to bolster our forward line, ideally. So we'll see what happens here. Let's jump into the sim. Like always, we go two months at a time here. So let's see what Vancouver can do. Mm. Slow simulation means that a trade is coming and here we are. So the New York Islanders want us to take on Valtteri Filppula in exchange for, I think it's Gabriel Breezeball, I'm not entirely sure, and a third round draft pick this year. So it's definitely an upgrade. And for a one year seam, I think we got the dub on this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below for all these trades, maybe number them, like trade number one, dub, trade number two, L. Let me know, I'm excited to see your thoughts too. All right, so at least we got a trade through those first two months, but seems like we're struggling to get wins. A 500 team and it sounds about right actually. Oh, another trade coming, another trade. Here it is, boom. Oh, okay, no, this is an L. <laughs> we're trading away Ryan Spooner. Who's a top nine forward for Brad Hunt, who's a top six D. I mean, we're saving on salary cap, but that doesn't matter this year. You hate to see it, but we gotta take it. All right, so after two months at the end of November here, we are just out of a playoff spot, one point behind Arizona for that last spot in our division. Uh, San Jose and Edmonton are having great years. Actually kind of surprising. The Knights are having an awful season. And in terms of points, Besser's having a great year. 16 goals, 16 assists, 32 points. That's above point per game. You can't really ask for more than that out of the kid. And there haven't been too many changes in our lineup. I think maybe Jay Beagle moved down to the fourth line because Philpel is on here now. But otherwise, it looks pretty much the exact same as it was. Except for Brad Hunt, who's in on D on the third line, and Quinn Hughes moved up to the second line, and he's already up one overall. So let's see how quickly this kid develops over the course of the year. All right, let's go to January here. Honestly, something, something's gotta happen. We need a trade. Hopefully they take Demko or our first round pick, because those would be the two pieces I don't mind getting rid of, honestly. All right, so we're officially above 500 now. We've gone on a uh, pretty decent win streak here. <sighs> Damn it. It's pretty much straight up it's this is this is literally I, two identical players being swapped for one another jay beagle leo komaroff so you know what i don't even care we don't have to say much about this trade Ooh, ooh okay okay yes yes here we go it's not a big upgrade but uh we got rid of derek pouliot who is a good young defenseman but i don't think we've been using him so we're trading him and our first round pick this year which is on the block for paul stastny um who is an upgrade for sure in terms of our center so he should slot in right in either the second or third line center or push somebody to the wing either way this is a dub happy with this one let's go all right so we just got about a month till the trade deadline and we're sitting in the exact same spot in the standings we are currently not in a playoff spot but it's going to be close right down to the last game of the season i think Elias Pettersson is doing uh, just as well, if not better than Brock Besser now. So he's got 57 points in 51 games. Uh, more assists than goals, so I guess he's setting up Besser more often. And our lineup, yep, like I thought, Paul Stastny going on the wing on the second line. So now we got two pretty decent uh, lines at the top. Uh, the third and fourth lines could still use some work, and we could use a better first line winger with Pettersson and Besser, but... It is what it is. And Quinn Hughes is now tied for the best defenseman on our team. <laughs> He's already up three overall since the start of the year, and we still have, I think, three months to go in the season. So he could get up to, like, 85 come playoff time. All right, this is the crunch time. This is where all the trades roll in. I think we've already had three trades so far, or four. Best trades are yet to come, I think. And speaking of one, we're getting rid of our Finnish young defenseman for an older Swedish defenseman and uh, shore up that decor a little bit. Our, we're giving up our second round pick this year as well, but again, we weren't using Yolevi in the lineup this year, so that's an upgrade for sure. That's a dub, I'll take it. Coming up to the trade deadline, it looks like things are gonna end off like that. No massive trades, but uh, the two big names that we got on our team are Stastny and Jalmerson, and that is it. That is how the team is gonna finish. Oh man, this is gonna be a tight race in the playoffs. We're tied for second in the division, uh, but Edmonton's right on our tail, and they got a game on hand, so that's going to be close. Now, Brock Besser has overtaken Elias Pettersson as a team point leader. He's on pace for a great year, dude. Oh, my God. Make it 100 points. And now the regular Quinn Hughes watch. Let's see where he is at. Let me see. Leo Komarov's in there. And Jalmerson should be here. And Quinn Hughes is now our best defenseman. <laughs> really, anything could happen as we get down to the wire here. I mean, I'd be very happy if we make the playoffs 
but uh, I won't be surprised if we miss it either. It'll be it'll be tough. Let's go here and see if we can make a run. Big win against the Coyotes right after the trade deadline. Let's go. Edmonton, big game too. Take a win, yes. Okay, we're going. We're getting some wins now. Let's go. Four game win streak. Big games against the Central Division. This could determine the wild card seeding. We've got a fair number of points. End it with two wins. Will we make the playoffs? Yeah, baby. We just squeaked in there. The Vancouver Canucks will play their fellow Canadian team, the Edmonton Oilers, in the first round. All right, so let's quickly recap this season before we get into the playoffs here. The Minnesota Wild won the West, which is actually pretty interesting. Fair number of surprises. I think half of the top eight in the West didn't actually make the playoffs in real life. So we got the Wild, the Oilers, the Canucks, and the Coyotes. Four of the eight teams that made it in this sim didn't make it in real life. So that's pretty interesting, I have to say. We didn't do half bad with 95 points, 43 wins. And I guess I uh, had a totally wrong idea about our team. We were actually the highest scoring team in the West, but we had the worst defense in the West as well. And in the East, your Toronto Maple Leafs came in first behind the Penguins and the Lightning, who we all know what happened to them in the playoffs this year. The Caps, the Bruins, Panthers, Devils, Flyers. In terms of player points, Pedersen finished above point per game. Brock Besser finished one point short of being a point per game, but you cannot complain with their, their seasons, man. Our first line, they're pulling their weight, they're getting things done. I love to see it. Bo Horvat, kind of wish he got traded, but I'll take your 66 points as well for the second line. That's great. Bershey on the first line isn't, what is he, 82 overall now or something? That's pretty good. You can't complain there. Stastny, Quinn Hughes had an unreal season as well. And our goalies, Markstrom had a tough year when Demko was in net. He actually didn't play very well either. So our goalies, they just kind of let us down. I don't know if it was, our, either, it was either our defense or our goalies that just didn't do the job, man. Compared to the rest of the league, Matt Murray had an incredible year, as did Freddie Anderson. Uh, 46 wins for Murray. 43 wins for Anderson. Carter Hart also had a great year, the rookie. Good to see. And your save percentage leader was Dednick, who had 36 wins. And looking at the forwards now, uh, Pedersen was actually the top scorer in the league. So Pedersen is going to get the Calder. He's going to get the Art Ross. He might even get the Hart Trophy as well in his rookie season. I don't know the last player to do that. Was it Gretzky? So in terms of player stats, definitely a surprising year. Patterson and Hughes both had incredible years. Now let's look at how the playoff tree is going to be set up. Winnipeg versus Nashville, the uh, the Wild and the Coyotes in the West, Oilers versus Canucks, and Stars versus Sharks. In the East, the Caps and the Devils, Penguins and Panthers, Bolts and Bruins, and Leafs and Flyers. Should be an interesting playoff run. Let's get to it. All right, so we simulate the first three games to see if we need to make any changes, if there's going to be a sweep, because you never know in the playoffs. Just talk to Columbus and the New York Islanders, and there you go. We're up three games to none on the Oilers. Let's finish them off in four. Bang. Just like that, on to the second round. Our second round matchup is the Dallas Stars. They had a seven game battle against the Sharks, I think. All right, so they might be a little bit beat up. Let's go through the first three games here. See how we do. OT win, a loss, and a loss. Okay, so we're down 2-1. You know the Stars, they got that offense and Ben Bishop and Ned and Heiskanen and Klingberg, you know, they're a dangerous team. Let's go game by game here. Let's see if we can tie up this series. There we go, we're 2-2. All right, come on, get it back. Mm, we're down 3-2, okay. <sighs> All right, let's jump into this sim here. Elimination game. I'm already happy with our season so far. Making it to the second round, game six of the second round. That's impressive for the Vancouver Canucks. They're developing early. Maybe that could have happened in real life if they had Quinn Hughes the entire year, but uh, you'll never know. So let's go here. Let's watch through the sim. The Dallas Stars on an early power play, and they score. Mark from Tyler Sagan from the high slot. First period's done. Down one nothing. No, you can't write this Vancouver team off. Anything can happen, especially on the power play if they could ever score. <sighs> Just need one, you need to tie this one up before. There it is, the league's leading scorer this year, Elias Pettersson, the rookie sensation. Ties it up from the bottom of the circle. Oh baby, one more period to go. Let's do it, let's force a game seven, let's push Dallas to another game seven here. Hopefully let's come out on top this time. Come on boys, Brock Besser, Bo, Ho Bo Horvat, Radic Paxson, no. Oh. Quinn Hughes, where's our other rookie? We need him to step up. Halfway through the third, 
kill this penalty. Seven minutes. Somebody step up. Oh, that's it. That's going to do it for your Vancouver Canucks, man. Out in six games against the Dallas Stars. Well, you know what? Like I said, it was a good run. I can't complain about a second round exit from the Vancouver Canucks at all. At all. I'm very happy with that. So let's go through the rest of the playoffs. See who wins the cup. It's the Boston Bruins. Oh my god, and the Tucson Roadrunners win the Calder Cup. All right, all right. All right, so there you have it. The Boston Bruins are your Stanley Cup champions. Now let's see how that happened, in fact. They beat Toronto in seven games in the second round, and they beat the reigning Stanley Cup champs, the Caps, in seven. So the Boston literally played the most games you could have played. Seven games in the first, and in the second, and in the third, and in the Stanley Cup Finals beating the best team in the West, the Minnesota Wild. So congrats to the Boston Bruins once again for a Stanley Cup championship, their first since 2011. And the last thing we do every episode is check the trophies. And here we have the Art Ross trophy for the most points, Elias Pettersson, the rookie. Let's see how many trophies he wins. Can we get a Pettersson trophy count somewhere on the screen right now? That's one for Pettersson, Art Ross. Oh, I really wanted him to win the heart too, but I guess... John Tavares took the Leafs to a Presence Trophy, so you know what? I'm not gonna not gonna argue with that. James Norris goes to Carlson, who had the most points. That's Lady Bing goes to Pedersen as well. Okay, so that was one I didn't expect actually. So he's at two. Pedersen with the Calder as well. That's three. Pasternak gets the Con Smythe. Okay, that's not surprising, seeing as they won the Cup. Vesna for Dubnik. Okay, got that one wrong. Jennings goes to Dubnik as well in the wild. Masterton goes to Nick Jalmerson. Okay, so the Canucks actually won a crap ton of trophies this year. Selkie goes to Claude Giroux. Ted Lindsay goes to John Tavares. And the Richard goes to Vladdy Tarasenko. So Pedersen had an unreal year. Overall, the Vancouver Canucks had a very impressive year in this sim. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and are excited for the return of accepting all trades. I'm gonna be running these I'm going to try once a week, but regular, if nothing else. Make sure once again you go hit up the community tab and vote for the team that you want to see me use in next video. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more of these because I'll be pumping them out all summer. And until next one, I'll see you guys then. Peace!